about you from my phone, all of a sudden it just comes up like, here's these memories. I ain't even asked for them. They just pop up. I want them popping up going, boy, look at God. Look at God. Because sometimes we need to be reminded. I'm all about you. I need to be reminded. Maybe let me just talk for me for a minute. Is that all right? Sometimes I need to be reminded of how good God is. Yeah. Now, Pastor Jay needs to be reminded sometimes of how good God is. So take those moments. Capture those moments. Live in those moments. Y'all ready this morning? Yeah. Y'all ready to go on a ride this morning? Yeah. Uh, don't worry. There's airbags in here. Airbags in my vehicle because it can't get rocky, it can't get bumpy. We got some hills, we accelerate, we push it, we slow it down, we brake, we, we speed over speed bumps. So don't worry though, the vehicle has airbags. Y'all can stand with me just for a moment. Just for a moment. Father God, before I speak any of your words, I ask, not only do you push back and remove the flesh that I walk in, but I ask in this service that you remove the flesh that we all walk in, that would stop us from hearing your word, receiving your word, that would remove the doubt between our ears that rest in our minds. And I ask that you elevate the faith, even if it's just of a mustard seed, to believe in the unbelievable, think the unthinkable, and receive the miraculous wonders of your word. Let everything that falls from my mouth be of your will. Let it be a word that answers prayer. Let it be a word of confirmation for yes. some. Yes. A word of deliverance for others. But at the end of all of this, let you be the one and only one that gets the glory. In Jesus' name, can everyone say amen? Amen. 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 And that amen. amen. I want y'all, listen, this is a service of participation. I'm like, I'm like loud. I don't like quiet. Mm. I have a mic in this corpus. I will walk out there, <laughs> sit next to you, Amen. and preach right next to you if I have to. Amen. Don't make me come out there. All right. So, I asked God, when well, Pastor, I was here, you Sunday, it was like two Sundays ago, right? Fifth Sunday. Fifth Sunday. It was Fifth Sunday. Just coming to visit. And he says, Pastor Jay, can you preach second Sunday? <laughs> Just like that, right? I was like, okay. So, Pastor, I was couldn't sleep about a week and a half ago. God got me up about 4 30. Tried to go back to sleep. Couldn't go to sleep. So I get up and I tell my wife, hey, I gotta go for a walk. It's six in the morning at this point. So I go for a walk. God begins to download something. I kept going, I don't know about that. You sure about that? I don't know about that. But God wouldn't get me off of that. So, we're going to be in Job this morning. Everybody, anybody not know the story of Job? It's okay if you don't. Everybody knows the story of Job. This is, this is the participation thing. What, what about Job? Yeah. Somebody tell me something about Job. What, what you know about Job? Because you've been smiling the whole time. But God got something for you this morning. I'm trying to tell you. What you know about Job? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but hey, that's enough. Job went through some stuff. Right? Oh, man. He, he didn't curse him. Right? But he went through a whole lot. Right? Uh-huh. He was victorious at the end. He was victorious at the end. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Anybody know how many chapters in Job? 
That's 42 of them jokes. Cause I ain't even gonna act. That was trick. I wasn't even about to have y'all start looking. Don't worry about it. There's 42 in there. You know all of that that we remember, you know, oh, he boy went through some stuff. Lost a whole lot. This you know how many chapters that is, part of Job? Three. And in them three, it's stuff happening in the front of that and the back of that. It's like that. Maybe one and a half to two and a half. The first part of one and the last part of three ain't got nothing to do with it. Then from four on, it's a whole nother story. We kind of hear about it. This is why I kept saying, Pastor, are you sure? Because God said, no, I, I need them to understand the position that they all have found themselves in. Some finding themselves in currently. So God wanted me to title this, The Great Debate. The Great Debate. Because see, I'm gonna tell you, from four all the way to 38, Job is having a debate. A debate. And I'm gonna start at 38, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna go for a ride. Y'all can stand for the reading of the word. It's something right. Job 38. I'm only going to read a few verses. And we're going to let God move on these few. Job 38.1. This is NIV. I'm going to be bumping around, jumping around for different versions of the word. But this is NIV. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Out of what? The storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plan with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I'm going to say, or a woman. I will question you and you shall answer me. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to have a seat. Now to understand this, God has put something on me to revisit stories that we all know. But for some reason in our mind, we've captured just a very small portion of it. And we take that and we ride, and then that's like just, you know, in our wallet of our Christian walk. <laughs> but God is like, oh, I need you, to, I, I, this is a season of getting past the appetizer. Mm -hmm. Y'all go out to eat, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you get that appetizer, right? Unless we on a severe budget, we order something else. Past the appetizer. You know, the starters. Use at Applebee's or something, you know. Give me the starter list. Then you go on and get you an entree. And if you got something left, and you still hungry, you might even get some dessert. Order a drink and say, is this refill? Is it free? Can I get Okay, free. Yeah, give me another one of them. So you having a good time. Enjoy getting full. God said this is a season. This is the season mm -hmm. to move past the appetizer. Mm -hmm. So, as my brother back there said, on point, Joe went through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Lost, man, loss after loss after loss. And if you read it, I'm going to say, when you finish and leave here, go home. Read all of this. It's going to blow your mind. Boy, mm -hmm. God inspired some great authors. Mm -hmm. Because Job's loss, he didn't even have time to grieve for the loss. Mm -hmm. He would get another loss. While he was trying to grieve from the first loss. 
And then yeah. as he's trying to, okay, well, now I need a grief for two, he get another one. Anybody ever been hit back to back to back with some mess? Feeling like God. Can I just get a little bit of time, a little breathing room? A little bit. It's like the only news you seem to get is bad news. Is bad. Mm -hmm. That was Job in this moment. And understand this, before this happened, Job was on top of the world. <laughs> I mean, looked at by every one of his peers like, he got it going on. Anybody ever had it seem like you had it going on? Right. At some point. I know a lot of us can look back on our lives and remember a time where it seemed like we had it all together. Money in our pocket. Drive a nice car. Nice house. Nice man or woman next to us. And then it seems like 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 the wind just blew in and blew it all away. All right. Yeah. And it's like we just had to start over. Well see, this was Joe. And he was wondering the whole time what in the world is going on. Because he loved God. He gave God his due, praised him, did everything you would just expect a Christian is supposed to do. Walk the walk and talk the talk. Tried his best to avoid all the potholes of life. But that didn't spare Job any of the heartache. Right? Right, right. Now, this part of the great debate, God wanted me to bring this because this is what happens to all of us. When we feeling down, we feeling like, oh, everything is caving in, looks like it's caving in, we starting to get to what's going on, woe is me, and all of that, what happens? Oh, some, some people gonna start to come around and they gonna have some advice. They gonna have some thoughts on your situation. Am I wrong about this? No. They gonna come and maybe invited by you, mm -hmm. and they gonna have their own thoughts on what's going on in your life. Right. Not only what's going on, but why is going on. Mm. See, Job had these three friends. Mm -hmm. And they all thought they was doing Job a favor. Go tell him. Philip, I, I think genuinely thinking they encouraging him. Trying to build him up. But have you ever had people trying to like pour into you? Especially when we talk about your walk now. Even your walk maybe before you knew God. Coming to give you advice. Looking back on it now like they didn't have a clue of what they was talking about. Mm -hmm. And my only person that has some friends like that. Thinking, but, but very eloquent in their words. But not dropping no wisdom to get me out. Mm -hmm. See, from three on a 30, from four to 32, these friends are having this exchange of why Job is dealing with his mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All three of them had kind of something different to say, but the main point was it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Because see, Job was going, I ain't done nothing. That's all he know in his head. I'm living right, I'm doing right, I'm speaking right, I'm sowing right, all the, all the principles, I'm trying to follow all the laws, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to obey those. Yes. And all of his friends can think it. Yeah, we know God, if he wouldn't have done none of this, mm -hmm. you didn't have something in the dark. All right. See, they didn't understand, they, they knew who Job was in the light, but they just 
felt and assumed he had to be doing something in the dark. Had to. Had to. Mm -hmm. They no more knew his situation than the man on the moon, but because of what they could see, yeah. they drew their own conclusions right. of who Job was yeah. out of their sight. Yes. Yes. And Job was, he was doing his best to defend himself. But as he defended himself, he's actually ticking God off. I'll prove that to you. In his defense of his situation, he's ticking God off. Because he's like, oh, he's doing this to me. He's doing that to me. And I'm taking it, but I don't deserve it. I don't deserve any of it. Crying. Crying, crying, crying. So the whole exchange in this great debate is I don't deserve it. Yes, you yeah, do. Yeah. I don't deserve it. Oh, yes, you do. It was no really advice. It was a blame game and, hey, I shouldn't be blamed. That was the conversation. But see, he was drawn into it and he took the bait. Yeah. yeah. He took the bait. Mm -hmm. When you entertain Go ahead. people. All right. They think they know better okay. and know best. They will try to tell you why you so messed up. <laughs> there wasn't an encouraging word in this debate. It's like a friend that's been riding with you the whole time. When it's all good, it's all good. Y'all smiling, y'all laughing, y'all, hey, don't worry about it, I got it. I mean, it's all good, but when it ain't, all of a sudden, these same friends is all of a sudden now telling you what they really think of you. Mm -hmm. What Job should have got on here was an exposure of his friends. Not to be like pulled into this debate of, of what was me. But that's what happened. Job just couldn't recognize. Oh, wait a minute. I've been surrounded by haters the whole time. All right, now. That was for somebody. Because, see, we in our walk, when it's all good, when we doing everything that we shouldn't be doing, but we seem to be prospering at it. You know what I'm saying? All those friends that's in it with it to win it with you. They like, oh yeah. Smiling. Until you, in one way or the other, it seems like it's not going well for you. Not at all. Then, all of a sudden, they are exposed because of their words and actions of, I was hating on you the whole time. The whole time. The whole smile your face, yeah. Yeah. sharpening yeah. blades behind your back. Yeah. I'm telling you it's because Job should have caught the revelation and cut. This shouldn't even have been a debate. It should have been like, oh, my friends have come. Wait a minute. You don't sound too friendly. Yeah. I can end this right now. Yeah. I have the power to end this right now. Yeah. But instead of using this power, he succumbed to his own flesh. And said, no, let, no, 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 you got it all wrong. Let me defend this thing. No, it ain't that. You know, I, I, I've been all right. Your God don't know what he doing. Uh -oh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. When you said, what was me? I've done everything right. I don't deserve anything that's happening to me. You said, God don't know what he doing. Uh -oh. I told you. Yes. He was taking God off, right? Yeah. See, I want you to hear this word. And I want you to really read this word. I want it to be reflective to you. Mm. Now that can be painful because when you read the word and it looks like a mirror and you start seeing yourself, sometimes you don't like who and what you see. But this is all about not condemning you, mm -hmm. but freeing you. Mm -hmm. It's about recognizing. Let me not have a Job moment. Hmm. Let me cut off unwise counsel. Yeah. Let me cut off those that are talking to me but really mean me no good. Yeah. See, you have a lot of unwise counsel in your ear. 
trying to tell you how to maneuver and move, and this is what's going to help you and get you through and free. But that was all a trap. You know that. We've all had unwise counsel at some point in our lives. That's right. But this ain't a past tense message. Because if you're not having unwise counsel now, guess what? It's some haters that's going to try to give you some in the future. That's why I say read all of this because it needs to get in every one of our spirits. That when we have these type of friends that come and want to start telling us why we deserve what we get, we need to know how to counter. All right. I look at that first verse and I see, then the Lord spoke to Job mm -hmm. out of the storm. Mm. Now see that right there, I could have stopped and that should have just erupted the church in a celebration. Yeah. Because see, Job was still in his storm. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the lie is we think we got to wait. Because with so many songs and so spiritual lift us up and make us feel so good, you know, about, you know, getting through the storm. But we digest that like we got to get all the way through it before God moves. Like this, this whole season is a season of pain. And we got to get all the way through it before we see God in it. This right here says, no, God spoke through the storm. While you in your mess, God will still come to you. Give you the wisdom and knowledge on how to get out. Because see, it is this conversation that happens from 38 on to the end that actually delivers Job. All right. Yeah. See, I say read all of it because there is counsel, there is a debate from 4 to 32. From 32, I'm going to tell you about somebody else that jumps in and I mean, totally is dismissed. From, from 32 to 7. 37. And then 38, God says, okay, I've had enough. In his conversation, is what we need to digest and take to say, okay, wait a minute. Now, God is showing me the difference between unwise and wise counsel. As long as I'm entertaining the unwise counsel, even if it's recognized, even if it's my best friend, even if it's my wife or my husband, I will never be free and out of the storm. Deliverance only happened when God said, let me talk to you. He goes on to say, yo, first of all, he reminds him, who is this? Let him know once again how powerful God is. Because he says, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Another, another version of the word says, without wisdom. Somebody said, God got my phone tapped. God got my phone tapped. He heard the whole thing. God sees, hears, knows everything you're doing. It's watching you. Take this unwise counsel. Act a fool. Blame him. He watching it all. Got record. Press from the beginning. That's a scary thought right there, ain't it? Amen. God got the camera on you. With record. Not binoculars. Got the camera. On record. On everything. Not you doing, but everything in your vicinity. Everything that's interacting with you. Every conversation exchange. Thought. See, my sister. That was talking about how... She was in the circle K. See, God had it on record. I'm going to bring it to light. We're going to make this thing relevant. He was watching the whole thing, right? Now, he could have let it play, but he got to the point of 38. It was like enough is enough. enough. Wouldn't let you get in the car. Enough. Had to 
can tell you some things in the spirit which made you go back and change the whole situation. That conversation, that exchange between you and God in that moment of trying to get to the door freed you. All right. See, we got to get deeper in the word and thinking like, okay, well, Joe, it was just about, you know, getting his stuff back. But for some of us, it's getting our mind back. It's getting our attitude right. It's fixing our mouth. It's fixing our eyes, how we see things. That's right. Removing lust from them. Uh -huh. It can be all kinds of things. Uh -huh. But whatever it is, God is watching. And he is going to get to a verse 38 in your life. Yes, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, this last thing, though, he was like, I'm going to come out of this storm. Come, come in while the storm is going on. After the storm finished, I'm going to come through it right now while you're in the mess. I'm going to remind you that I've been watching this whole time. And now, the next verse is pretty much, I'm about to get you straight. <laughs> because he didn't just say, let me talk to you. No, he said, I'm warning you, this ain't going to be nice. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer. When God comes to you, you're going to have to be ready with a you response. you got to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That response is what's going to determine mm -hmm. if your storm ends or continues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not about you getting all the way through the storm. The storm will keep going if your response ain't right. That's for somebody. I tell people I'm dropping stuff all the time. Yeah. Better pick up what I'm putting down. That was for somebody. So let me tell you just what happens at the end. I just give you a little bit. I'm not even gonna go into it. Because God is so so matter of fact, you about to catch this. Watch. I'm gonna put my glasses on just make sure I don't miss a word. Just verse four. He says, Where were you? When I laid the earth's foundation, where were you? At? Uh, where were you? Mm -hmm. Tell me if you understand. Uh -huh. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched out a measuring rod across it? Oh, where was its footing step? Or, or how? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and, uh, and all the angels shouted for joy, who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the room? Uh huh. When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in the thickness, when I fixed limits for it uh -huh. and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. This goes on. <laughs> and no one it got, look, listen, this is the equivalent. We got some mothers and fathers out there. I say mothers and fathers because at some point, your child is going to have this epiphany. Mm -hmm. Like, their life is your fault. Mm. Speak it. And you ain't never done nothing. Nothing. Whoa. And why I am, how I am, and where I am is because of you. Yeah. And what happens? A mother will say, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You was in my room for nine months. It was horrible. I was in labor for 42 hours. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the dad is going to say, wait a minute. Everything was good with me till you came. I had to sacrifice, sell my car. I had to move out of my pad. I had to do this. I gave up everything for you. A parent is gonna be like, wait a minute, let me break this down. You don't understand my sacrifices. Yeah. You don't, you have no idea what I've done. You can't begin to comprehend what I've done. Mm -hmm. See, God.
God went on a tangent. Because he said, I've had enough of this debate. Yeah. I've already said you was getting unwise counsel. But my problem is the crying and the blaming for everything happening to you. Trying to make your case that you didn't deserve any of it. God had to remind him from 38 all the way in the 42. God's like, let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you my matchless capabilities. Let me just give you a just a little bit of the salt and pepper. And blow your mind on the complication of me being a creator. You just enjoy them clouds and them birds and the animals running. You have no idea what it took to make them. Uh -huh. My imagination. You got a oof of that. That's some parents, that's when we talk to kids when they, they make that move. You have no idea what I had to do. What it took to do what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Them clothes and that room and that food you enjoy, you have no idea. Mm -hmm. No idea. This is important because we will all find ourselves in a Job moment. Mm -hmm. We have found ourselves in a Job moment. We will find ourselves in a Some are in a Job moment right now. Right now. Yeah. This isn't so much about Job in the moment. It's about what you do in the moment. Is God is like, he told him, better stand strong, because I'm about to bust you up. Not with a few verses, not with just a chapter. I'm going to go on and on till you're tired of it. And then I'm going to go on some more. He does all of this. And like I say, it's about how do you reply? How do you handle when God has to get involved. Mm -hmm. In 42, chapter 42, mm -hmm. God takes some breather and says, now you're going to answer. Because, <laughs> you know, this is going on long. You know how you're talking and yelling at your kids and they try to answer? Even though you ask the question, you'd be like, shut up, I didn't ask you to answer me. What? And they're confused. Because <laughs> I thought, they thought, I thought you had to. I'm just trying to answer you. Said, no, shut up, I ain't finished. That was rhetorical. It wasn't for you to answer. I'll tell you when it's time. Right. <laughs> so in 42, Job gets his moment. And he replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears, they heard you. But now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, it wasn't too much Job had to answer, he just had to answer right. Hmm. He reminded God in that whole conversation, I heard everything you said to me, starting with 38, yeah. of what I was going to have to do as far as this. I'm, I'm trying to tell God, initially before I even start, I was listening. And because I listened, Job's thing is, I recognize my wrongs. 
I was complaining the whole time. Yes, it was happening to me, but my ways are not your ways. Uh -huh. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I can't even begin to understand your understanding. I despise the way I was acting. Yeah. He didn't just say, I'm sorry. I despise it. I despise <clears throat> how, did, how many of us reflect on our past actions and just really despise it? Hmm. Thank you. This is participating. He's okay. Thank you. Anybody despise some of their past actions? Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, God right there, you know, he honors that. Yeah, he does. That right there is bringing you through because after that, God finishes 42. And he says, because of your response. Because. Mm -hmm. Now, your response. Now, them fools you was talking to. <laughs> they fools. But let me tell you, what will deliver your friends? <laughs> Those foolish ones you got. God was so honored by the response. He said, yo, you go get these calves, seven of them and all that, have them give them to you. You take this up, you burn it and pray about this thing and I will clean they slate. Clean it. I'm gonna double what you lost. Yeah. Friends didn't do a thing. Don't you know your proper getting out the storm, there is overflow yeah. that will flow over to them fools that was trying to counsel you in the first place. Yeah. See, it's your walk and testimony that will save others. And you ain't even got to be walking around quoting scriptures. It's how you walk that will save the others. You Your testimony yes. is what will bring them into the house of God. But I didn't even get to the point that we all remember about this whole Job thing. <laughs> See, Job hadn't done anything wrong. He didn't do anything to deserve what he was getting. The whole point of it was that the adversary, Satan himself, the accuser, busted up in the midst of God and his crew and said, uh, I bet if I really got down on one of your people, oh, they curse you. He was so braggadocious about Job, was so confident yeah, yeah. in how Job served that he said, oh, I got one for you. Give him the best you got. Yeah. Can't kill him. But give him the best you got. And I know, I know. he'll stand. Yeah. Sometimes your storm ain't got nothing to do with you. Uh -huh. All that mess you're going through ain't got nothing to do with you. It is to show all of the other people how you will stand. Because yes. mm -hmm. see, sometimes they're not going to hear it from Pastor. Sometimes they won't hear it from Pastor Jay. It is how you stand that they'll hear it. Because they see it. Where Job messed up was him forgetting. God got me no matter what I'm going through. I don't understand why I'm going through it. This is what he should have said. I don't understand why I'm going through it. No, I don't think I deserve it. But it must be a reason I'm going through it. Because I know who my father is. I know how he protects me and watches over me. If something is happening to me like this, he must. Have his hands on it in a way I don't understand. So now I ask you. Can you embrace your storm? Can you embrace your storm? Can you? Can you? Can you embrace your storm? Because our natural instinct is telling you right here. The natural instinct of Job is in us is to fight the storm. 
It's a reason why you say, be like a blade of grass that just blows in the storm. It is the tree that stands so sturdy, trying not to move, is the one that'll break. Mm -hmm. All right. Fighting that storm. It's time that we all become a blade of grass. Okay. Then understand the only reason the storm is here is because God created it. That's right. We got in our head that He created all these beautiful things, but. Satan somehow got this miraculous power out of nowhere and created storms. He did not. He has no power or authority. Remember that. The reason we're going over Job right now is to remind you to put him back under your foot. This is a message to ignore unwise counsel. Mm -hmm. To embrace what you don't understand. Yeah. And never forget. That God and God alone is your source. Yeah. He is your source. Only he can take it away. Yeah. And he can give it. Stop giving so much power to the enemy. Okay. Yes. Stop putting the enemy up on a pedestal. All right. When the word of God says he's beneath you, he's not even eye to eye with you, let alone on a pedestal. You know, in services, before I start talking about 